I'd like to uh, introduce the next speaker, is Ms. Cinziana Frangetti, and she is a consultant with Supolic and uh, is helping with the launch of EcoNavitas, and uh, you'll see from her presentation, uh, she has a background in, in finance and uh, has been doing research in the areas of green building finance, uh, and that will be her presentation today. Thank you, Steve. Um, hi, everybody. So as Steve was mentioning, what I'm going to talk to you about today is uh, green building value and valuation and green financing. As you can see from the title, um, the issue here at stake is money. It's the second time we're hearing this word today, so maybe, uh, maybe we're onto something here. Uh, I actually have a quite difficult task today, uh, but also a very pleasant one. And that is to present the research and findings of some of the lead academics and practitioners in the field of green building financing that have been trying to push the agenda of green building financing and uh, promote the, the real and make all the stakeholders involved understand the real and tangible value of uh, green buildings. One of these uh, leading academics is Mr. David Lawrence, who unfortunately could not be here with us today, uh, but he allowed us to use his research and findings in order to discuss about the green building financing and what is the state of uh, value and valuation in green building today. Let's talk about value. Uh, in economic terms, value is about how much a product or service is worth relative to other products or services. And in the case of green building, we will talk about the value of green buildings relative to the value of normal, regular buildings. And value has different facets. Each stakeholder, each, each person looks at a product or project and sees different, it value, values that product or project differently, right? For simplicity purposes, we will take only two sides of the story here. The perspective of the investors and the financiers and the one of the end buyers and market on the value of green building. Each of these two sides, the supply and the demand side basically for green buildings, see value differently. For investors, what is value? Value is expected return. Of course, discounted by risk and taking out the cost. From the buyer side, for the, from the market, the, the value of green buildings relies in the expected benefits from, from them. It's comfort, it's health, image, also maintenance costs, resale price maybe. We see that there are different perspectives on value, but what's important is that these perspectives are interdependent. At the end of the day, they need to come to terms with each one's perspective and uh, meet somewhere in the market through what is commonly known as the price. So what we're going to talk about basically is the value of green buildings from the market's perspectives and from the investor's perspective. Let's start with the first. Do people, do corporations value indeed the benefits of, of green buildings? Um, we've Previous speakers have talked already about that and you, you have seen evidence that this is indeed the case. I'm going to show you some more evidence here and this uh, comes on two issues, is the demand for green building and the price premiums that consumers and buyers are willing to pay for green buildings. Let's look at some evidence. Uh, one of these is a very recent study issued by COSTAR, a US-based consultancy that looked at a large number of green buildings in the United States, around 950 Energy Star rated buildings and some 355 LEED certified buildings. Let's look at the other perspective now, the investor side. So, of course, on this supply side, we are interested in what the people with the money think and how do they see the value of buildings. Uh, how usually uh, the investment industry looks at things is, uh, or values things is through uh, complex methods, uh, complex assessment methods such as valuation and risk assessment. So is there intrinsic value in green buildings? Um, after the presentation of Ms. Uh, um, Joanna, it's very, I mean, I, there's not much more to say. You've seen that there are the numbers work. There are uh, real uh, cost savings from uh, green buildings. Um, I have here uh, another example uh, from uh, one of David Lawrence's research 
uh, he compares two prototype buildings in the United States and shows that through a minimal uh, investment uh, with energy efficient uh, improvements, they had 36.7% savings in energy costs and a rate of uh, return on investment of 10.7 years, 10.7%, uh, I'm sorry. Expanding this, we've only looked at the energy savings, but we can expand this to other types of savings that derive from green building uh, measures. These are emission savings, if we, uh, if we can quantify that, our water savings, as we've seen from previous presentations, operations, other operations and maintenance, but also productivity and health benefits. And this again were, were mentioned uh, before, and we can see that uh, this study that was done uh, on 100, with, the data, with data from 100 buildings in the United States, of which 33 were green buildings, shows that uh, productivity and health benefits are very significant. The conclusions of this study is that with a 2% additional cost in, uh, in, a, in the initial phases of the project, you can uh, gain up to 20% uh, cost reduction, 20% uh, of the total cost of the building uh, over the lifetime of the building. And here they uh, consider the 20 year uh, lifespan of the building. There are of course other benefits, some were mentioned before, I, I have uh, some others here like improved marketability, longer useful lifespans for green buildings, more stable cash flow because they're low turnover, people are just satisfied with living in green, living and working in green buildings. Uh, also reduce exposure to the um, increasing, uh, increasingly stringent environmental regulations. I guess by now we are all convinced that there is value, tangible value in green buildings. Now, the problem is, do the finance world recognize that? Th does the finance world recognize that? So um, I'm not going to dwell too much into this because everybody talked about this holistic approach to, to valuation. We, uh, we saw that there are tangible benefits, economic benefits. There are even more benefits if we take into account the environmental impact and the social impact and um, benefits such as image of the corporation. Um, the problem, as Mr. Zaiman uh, mentioned, is are the, met the metrics, basically. But there has been a lot of effort put into that to create systems of valuation that can be uh, adopted on a wide scale in the financial world. One was the, U the UNEP uh, Financial Initiatives uh, uh, project. Uh, other institutions that are doing that is the Royal Institute of Charter Sur Surveyors, um, and there's also one organization in the United States that uh, we've also uh, talked and collaborated with, the Green Building Finances, Financing Consortium, that are actually are, are working with the financial institutions to develop such methods. So there is hope. And we're just uh, at the beginning of the road, but I think we're moving very fast in the right direction. The valuation should be, the value of the green buildings is higher, so valuation should be higher for green buildings. But how about the risks? I don't really have to say much about the risks, because I think he, Ms. Popa already convinced you that there, is, there are lower risks associated with green buildings. Another, just one more that I want to mention is the one related to energy efficiency. Uh, this, uh, the energy efficiency improvements will dramatically lower the risk of uh, imp the impact of tariff uh, increases in uh, fuel. Um, and with the oil barrel reaching the $120 uh, a barrel um, psychological barrier, I think this is a very important risk that we need to take into account and that green buildings actually overcome. Again, the liability risk that was mentioned before from uh, sick building syndromes, from uh, other liabilities to the occupants and the environment. Why is valuation and uh, risk assessment important? It's because based on what these measures tell us, the investment world makes decisions. On the one hand, investment funds will invest in green buildings before, because they want to invest in projects with higher value. On the other hand, banks will give more preferential fi financing to sustainable buildings because they know, they understand, and they recognize the benefits in value uh, increase and uh, risk reduction. 
Um, as uh, an example, um, a real life example of that, uh, we can talk about the preferential financing for households. So families who want to buy apartments in green buildings. Uh, there are two ways of looking at this type of financing. It's either through increasing the, the value, the, the, the amount of the loan based on the fact that energy efficiency and other improvements reduce the maintenance cost. So at the end of the day, the occupiers have more cash available to repay higher uh, installments. Um, and it's something similar to the leases in Australia that were mentioned previously. Or banks recognize that there is lower risk with green buildings, so they uh, give, uh, they create products with lower interest rates for green buildings. And the good news is that this is not just theory, this is actually happening in the United States, in Europe, in Australia. I have here only a few examples of banks actually implemented such preferential financing for households. One of them is in Germany and uh, they are implementing the interest, the lower interest rates. And the other is, uh, one other is in the United States that are recognizing the uh, cost uh, reductions and are uh, giving higher loan amount, basically increasing the debt to income ratio for, for the loans. Bank of America and Citigroup introduced such energy efficiency mortgages only last year. So this is another sign that the market is moving towards where we want it to be financing green buildings. I don't even have to go through all this because you've heard before there are obviously barriers to in introducing the sustainable valuation. It's all about the metrics. We need more statistical data. We need everybody to agree on what is the uh, what are the indicators, the, the performance indicators that we need to take into account. Uh, and we need the financial world to move a little bit from the traditional valuation methods and uh, integrate sustainability, environment and social sustainability into their valuation. There is, however, the, the framework to do this. On the one hand, the financial world has made commitments um, on to, to improve their approach on environmental issues. And I have here two examples. In 1997, uh, the, um, one of the UNEP's initiatives, there was a statement by a financial institution that actually encouraged all the financial sector to include um, uh, the issue of environment, the sustainability and environment into the way they finance projects. And also uh, the World Bank's equator principle creates, creates a framework to, uh, to include in project financing these environmental and social issues. To sum up, what we've learned so far is that green buildings are valued by the market, there's no doubt about it, that there are new valuation methods on the, in the pipeline and some of them actually implemented and there are preferential products for green buildings on the market. So it is an emerging market, it will grow. Now I wish you, actually I wish all of us good luck in taking these opportunities further. Thank you very much.